Rachel Dennison, you are loved and you are missed. And I'm here to read you a little bit of a story and then have a bit of an activity afterwards. This story is about an artist called Kandinsky. And he used to paint the lines and the shapes that he saw in his brain whenever he heard different types of pieces of music. So we're gonna read the book and then I have a couple of activities that you can do at home. So this book is called The Noisy Paint Box, The Colors and Sounds of Kandinsky's Abstract Art. Vasya Kandinsky spent his days learning to be a proper Russian boy. He studied bookfuls of math, science, and history. He practiced piano scales to the marching click of a metronome. He sat stiff and straight at dressed up dinners while the grown-ups talked and talked and talked. Doesn't sound like a very interesting life, does it? Basia's well-off world was perfectly polite until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate art, said auntie. She showed Vasya the correct way to mix colors on the paint box palette. Vasya mixed red with yellow, then he mixed red with blue. As the colors changed, Vasya heard a whisper and a Louder, yes. and louder still. Yes. What's that sound? asked Vasya. I don't hear a thing, said Auntie. Vasya listened as his brush stirred and swished. The swirling colors trilled like an orchestra tuning up for a magical symphony. Mama, Papa! called Vasya. What a noisy paint box. Silly Vasily, said Papa. Stop being foolish, said Mama. Vasya painted the sound of the colors. He spun a bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It clinked like the highest notes on the keyboard. He brushed powerful navy rectangles that vibrated deeply like the lowest cello strings. What are you eating? <laughs> oh, you found something. <laughs> oh, Olive. He tossed up jagged swashes of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of burbling green, clanging orange, and twinkling violet. Vasya painted and painted until the colors went Look what I made, shouted Vasya. Is it a house? Asked Auntie. Is it a flower? Asked Mama. What's it supposed to be? Asked Papa. It's music, said Vasya, waltzing his painting around the house. Calm down, said Mama. Do some math, said Papa. Heavens, said Auntie. This boy needs a proper art class. So Vasya went to art class and learned how to draw houses and flowers, just like everybody else. As the years passed, Vasya finished school and studied to be a lawyer. He ignored his noisy paint box and lived the way people expected. But Vasya couldn't ignore the sounds of the colors singing to him in the streets of Moscow. That's a city in Russia. The canary-colored mailbox whistling as he rode to work. The scarlet sunset haze ringing above the ancient Kremlin walls. An ivory chorus of snowflakes scattered on the sable collar of his overcoat. One evening, suitably steamed and starched, Vasya attended the opera. As the orchestra
orchestra's music crashed around him, the colors of the noisy paint box twirled wildly in his mind. Stomping lines of vermilion and coral, caroling triangles in pistachio and garnet, thundering arches of aqua and ebony, with shrill points of cobalt and saffron. Vasya heard the colors singing. Vasya saw the music dancing. And Vasya was never quite as proper again. He quit his job teaching law and moved to Moscow, from Moscow to Munich, to be a painter. He studied with this famous teacher and that famous teacher. Vasya wanted to paint the colors he heard. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What's it supposed to be? His teachers asked him. Hmm. Vasya wanted to paint the colors he heard, but maybe the famous teachers knew best. Once again, Vasya put houses and flowers, animals and people into his paintings, just like everyone expected. His teachers were happy. Vasya was not. His artist friends understood. They too were tired of painting pretty landscapes and pretty ladies. They thought that art needed to change. Art should make you feel, Vasya told them, like music. Exactly, said his friends, but none of them knew how to paint feelings until the day Vasya grew brave enough and invited the world to see the paintings roaring from his noisy paint box. Snapping cerulean points, crunching crimson squares, whispering charcoal lines. Vasya named these paintings after music that he loved. Improvisation, composition, accompaniment, fugue, movement, and simply free sounds. With this noisy paint box, Vasya Kandinsky created something entirely new, abstract art. one of his paintings right here. It took a long time for people to understand. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What's it supposed to be? It's my art, said Vasya Kandinsky. How does it make you feel? Here are some other pictures that Kandinsky has done in his lifetime. I'll get nice and close so you can see. All right, so boys and girls, what you can do for an activity to go with this, there's a couple of things. Um, number one, you could just listen to the story. That's perfectly fine. If you wanna take it a step further, if you go on Google Chrome Music Lab, there is a game or an experiment called Kandinsky. And what you're going to do with your Chromebook or tablet, you're going to take your finger and you can make swishes and lines and shapes, and that's going to make a sound. If you do not have your Chromebook at home or if you don't have access to a tablet, this is something else you can do. I'm going to add some classical music to this video in just a little bit, and then what you're going to do is you're going to listen to the song and you only have the amount of time that the song plays to draw your shapes, your lines, all of those pictures that pop up into your brain. Now, Kandinsky was an abstract artist, so he mainly did lines and shapes. If you're more of a realist, maybe draw a picture that pops into your brain when you hear this music. It's all about what your feelings are making you do. Okay, after I play a song, I'm going to hold up what I heard and the picture that I saw in my brain. Okay.
All right, Central Denison, that was your first piece of music, and that piece is called Pizzicato Polka. Second graders, you might have heard Pizzicato in the instrument Safari. Pizzicato Polka is written by Strauss. Lots of little short notes being played. This is my piece of art that I drew for Pizzicato Polka. Now, don't look at this piece of art and go, oh, well, that's what I'm gonna draw for the next piece. Because guess what? The next piece of music is going to be way different. Let's listen to the next one. That was piece number two, and that piece was called Music for Royal Fireworks, written by Handel. I thought it kind of sounded like fireworks, um, and you'll kind of notice that I kind of have some firework lines in my picture. Here it is. All right, let's see what we come up with next. <laughs>
All right. That piece was called Trolls, and it's from a large piece of music called Pictures at an Exhibition, and it's by Mussorgsky. Couldn't you kind of hear like creepy little trolls running around during in that song? All right, so let's take a look at my picture. There's actually lots of little scribbles from when the trolls were rummaging around. Okay, get ready for something completely different. Trolls song. This one is called The Swan and it's from Carnival of the Animals. Um, this year's second graders, you'll remember that from first grade. And first graders, um, one day we will get to listen to that big piece of music together. It's one of my favorites. But this one was called The Swan. This is what I saw, very swirly. Okay, we've got one more piece.
Whoa, how is that for a grand finale? That was definitely really loud. That one is called Dia Sire, and it's by Verdi. Here's my picture. I kind of had this image of tornadoes for some reason in my brain. There you go. All right. Boys and girls, I miss you very much, and you are loved. See you soon.